Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Those who are at home right now, those who are in the parking lot, honk your horns. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen, 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 amen. On this Resurrection Sunday, God is good, amen. God is good. Before we start this service this morning, let's open up with praise and worship right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for your grace, your mercy, your love and kindness. We thank you, their God, for saving our lives, for dying for us on the cross, their God, and rising again, their God. We give you glory and honor. We praise you. We lift you up this morning. We give you thanks for you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We worship you. Thank you, Lord, for what you are doing and what you are about to do in this place today and in our lives, dear God. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Worship as we sing this morning.
you adore him, go ahead and blow your horns. Praise him. Hallelujah. Let everything that has breath praise you the Lord. Let everyone that has a car blow the horn for him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is a good day to be living for Jesus. All this week and last week I've been hearing how pastor has been talking about, you know, not having a spirit of fear or worried about that thing. I want you to take that same revelation of it in your giving. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to give when things are tough, when money's tight, when you have worries, when you have bills, when you have needs. But I want you to remember to trust in God about this day. Don't be afraid to give it over to him. Especially when he's willing to open up the windows of heaven. Pour you out a blessing you don't have room enough to receive. Rebuke the devourer from all that you have. God has plans for you. Don't you miss out on the blessing and be afraid. Praise the Lord. Ushers, be prepared to give. And it's good to know that we can still keep giving. And nothing's going to stop us from giving. The enemy may try to keep us from giving and from paying tithes, but he doesn't want you to receive those blessings from God. He doesn't want to be kept away from your things and your people and your health. Amen. And just quickly, I just want to remind you, even if you're at home streaming, you can still go online on obc.church. That's our website. And there's a big button there. You can see it right there on the screen on the home page. Now you're giving, but understand that when you're giving, you're also receiving. But you click on that, and it has a bunch of ways for you to go ahead and give, multiple ways. It gives you an address for mailing. It gives you a way you can pay on phone and a way you can pay online, however you want to do it. But I want you to know that you're not restricted, and that's something that the enemy wants you to be, is restricted. Not just from giving, but from receiving your blessing. Or from receiving your protection from the God. Praise the Lord. Just trust in it. Also, for those of you that are here, and praise God that you are here today. The ushers will be coming to you and you'll be able to give. And please give with, you know, give until your heart's content. I'm saying there's no limit on it. Don't you be limited. But as God has been unlimited for you and always given his best to you, you do your best for him. Remember how good Jesus is. Blow your horn if you agree with that. People at home, just stand up and pray. All right. Praise the Lord. Let's just prepare. We're going to go ahead and go into prayer. Father, we thank you once again today, Lord. We love you. Put to touch our hearts, Father God. Take away any worries, any fear. Help us to remember, Father God, that as you provided for us yesterday, you'll provide for us again today and tomorrow and forevermore because you're a God that's that good to us, that loves us that much, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Have your way today, Father God. Bless those who have to give. Encourage and enable those to give next time, Father God, so that they too would receive the blessings, Lord. In Jesus' almighty name, bless these tithes, bless these offerings. For your glory, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on and praise the Lord, everybody. Yeah. Your hope. Give and it will come back to you. Rest down, shaking together and running over. Give and it will come back to you. When you give unto the Lord. Shake it together and run it over again.
Somebody clap your hands, somebody blow your heart, somebody flash your eyes. Amen. Just give God some praise today. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Where God's people are, that's His house. That's His people. Hallelujah. We're just so thankful for the opportunity to be here today and to worship the Lord. What a beautiful presence of the Lord out here on a Sunday morning, Easter Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise God! We greet all of you in the name of Jesus. and We have a parking lot full here and people just seem to keep on coming in. And uh, we want to thank Brother Mark and Pastor Mark Jones for being here with us with his family. Amen. Love him. Appreciate him. You're going to be hearing a little bit from him in just a few moments. But we're going to turn to the word of the Lord. The Lord to cooperate with me on the, the wind here. We're going to look at the word of the Lord in uh, Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. And I just want to read one simple verse on this resurrection morning. Hallelujah. And Isaiah says this, speaking for the Lord, he says, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? The arm of the Lord, of course, is the strength of God. By the way, some of you that are, uh, you, you want to get out of your cars, you're welcome to do that. And if you grab an usher and you want a chair, we've got chairs up here that they can bring to you. Amen. But I want to just speak to you today just a little bit about whose report will you believe? Whose report is the church going to believe in? 2020 we were facing trials and tests and we're facing all kinds of things we're going to believe the report of the Lord amen? amen perhaps like no other Easter morning in our lives Christians seem to be under attack they don't want us to meet on this day and I think of any day in the life of a Christian that we must meet it's a day to honor the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ because He lives, I face tomorrow. Because He lives, I have victory in my life. And so we meet today. You probably have heard as I heard that even one of the governors of our nation was telling Christians, if you meet on this day, that we will force you into isolation for 14 days. Now I know that there's been some pushback on that, and I'm glad for that. I'm glad that we have a governor in the state of Florida that are that allows us to be here today. We are not violating any laws. We are not doing anything illegal. We are exercising the First Amendment to the Constitution that we have a separation of church and state and we want to worship our God. We don't want to be unsafe. We want to maintain the social distancing. We want to do what we can to make sure we protect one another. But all friend, especially on Easter, we've got to get together. We've got to worship the Lord. We've got to declare this is what it's all about. This is what the church is all about. Praise God. Even in this current flu virus, we see that we can't always trust the reports that come out. When they tell us that one and a half million people are going to die from the virus, now they say it's more like 80,000 and they're revising that down. Listen, I'm glad they were wrong. I, 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 I'm, I, I hope nobody else dies from this virus. I, I'm, not, I, I'm, I'm not wanting anybody to get sick. But I suspected all along they were not telling us the true story. But you know, they're not the first that has told falsehoods and not told the true story. Satan did this from the very beginning of man's existence on earth. Satan mounts massive misinformation campaigns against every child of God. 
His job is to create doubt and unbelief in our lives. To lower our self-esteem. To kill our spirits. And to destroy our hope. But here we are on Resurrection Sunday. In a parking lot. In our cars. Worshiping the Lord. Letting Satan know. You won't stop the church. You won't quiet us. We're going to continue to worship God. All of his lies are designed to cause us to deviate from the course that Christ has set for us. Right. We see in the Easter story that the Jewish leaders had devised a plan to spread a false story about the resurrection of Christ. Right. That's right. Fake news. After Christ died on the cross, his body was buried in Joseph's tomb where it laid for three days. Right. And just as he prophesied, he rose from the dead on the third day. Hallelujah. The G Jewish leaders knew of this. That's why they took great precautions to make the body secure. Right. They placed a stone in front of it. Right. It was sealed. They had a round-the-clock vigil of professional soldiers guarding the tomb. Hallelujah. In fact, Pilate told them, said, you make this as sure as you can. You do everything. You pull out all the stops. You try to make sure that nobody can ever say he rose from the dead. Right. However, we know on the first day of the week that Christ, just like he said, arose from the dead and walked out of that grave victoriously over death, hell, and the grave. Somebody shout to the Lord. Somebody praise God. Hallelujah. This resurrection sent shockwaves throughout all of Jerusalem and is still sending shockwaves across the whole world today that Jesus is alive. Many people don't want Him to be. Many people don't want His power to be there. But He's still there and His power is still there and alive. This was not the first time though a resurrection had happened when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. That caused many problems. They knew, the leaders did, that this would increase the size of the crowds that followed Jesus. This so bothered them that they even consulted one another about murdering Lazarus again. Of course, there was that also that little 12-year-old girl who was Jairus' daughter. And that too created a great uproar that Christ has power over death. Hallelujah. Then of course there was the widow's son. Jesus stopped that funeral procession that day and raised him from the dead Hallelujah. right out of the coffin. The Jews couldn't afford any more of these things taking place. So they took great pains. They went to great trouble to make sure that Jesus' followers would not be further encouraged by the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. They did everything possible to prevent it. Now that it happened, the only way though to handle it was to devise another lie. Tell everybody that the disciples had come in the night and stole the body. That's right. They gave the soldiers a large amount of money to spread this fake news. That's right. They even guaranteed them protection from the sword of Pilate if they told these lies. Right. But to anybody with common sense, which is not so common these days it seems, right. you can see that their story was filled with many inconsistencies. First of all, if they had all been asleep, how would they have known what had really happened? Secondly, if any one of them had been awake, wouldn't they have woke up the others and tried to prevent the theft of the body? But that didn't happen. Right. Number three, if they had truly been asleep, they never would have confessed it for fear of the punishment that would take place in admitting it. Right. Number four, if the disciples had stolen the body, why didn't they go out and arrest them and prosecute them as grave robbers? Right. On the other hand, for the church today, and for those of you that are listening and those that are you, are you that are present, the greatest proof that Christ was and is the Son of God, that Christ is God manifest in flesh, is the resurrection itself. And no one knew any better than these soldiers that Christ rose from the dead. The fact is that Jesus was, and Jesus in 2020 is still alive today. Somebody say amen. The Bible tells us he showed himself to many witnesses. Acts 15, in spite of the lies that Satan and his followers tell about Jesus, 
We who have experienced His birth in our lives, we know the truth better than anybody. Right. We know He's the King of Kings. Yes. We know He's the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. We know He's alive today. Yes. We know He possesses all power Hallelujah. in heaven and in earth. We know He saves us from all of our sins. We know! The twisted stories told about Christ will not stop us from believing the truth of God's Word. Today, Satan tells twisted stories to us too. Satan tells us that God has forsaken us. It is true that believers too experience troubles in life. But Satan wants you to believe that you are trapped in a pit of despair and hopelessness. He wants you to get depressed over your circumstances right. and give up on God. Right. Satan is great at taking facts and stretching them into great lies. Right. The fact that we are suffering or hurting or dealing with discouragement. He takes those things and tries to stretch them into the lies that our situation right. is hopeless. Right. That God has deserted us. That God is not even real. Preacher. Or that maybe even God is the very reason that you're having the troubles you're having. I want you to know tonight, or today, I will not buy into the fake lies and the fake news of Satan. Amen. But I know that Jesus Christ is my Savior. I know that He has healed my body. I know that He protects me. I know that He is, he is my resurrection in my life. Hallelujah. Satan takes the fact that we have made mistakes in our life. Yes, we have even committed sins. And he strives to stretch that into a lie that there is no hope for us. No forgiveness. In our moment of trial and test, he whispers repeatedly, you're a failure. There's no hope. You're a sinner. You're lost. You're damned. You're doomed. However, don't believe the fake news. Paul certainly did not believe the news. For Paul said, we now have this light shining in our hearts. But we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. Yes. This makes it clear that our great power is from God, Paul said, not from ourselves. That's right. That's right. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. That's right. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. Hallelujah. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. Hallelujah. We get knocked down, but we're not destroyed. Come on, church. We're not beaten. We're not defeated. We are victorious. We are going to win this thing. We are going to overcome in the end. Praise God. It's easy to believe that you're a failure if you listen to the story that Satan tells. He has learned the secret of how to get someone to believe a lie. You simply tell it to them over and over and over and over again. And especially at certain times when they are most susceptible to believing those things. However, the Easter story is a great reminder yes. that we should never lose hope. Oh, we should never lose hope. Hallelujah. We should never give up and we should never give in. Thank you, it is true that we may experience weakness, right. but it's a lie that we have no source of strength. That's right. The Word of the Lord reminds us that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Oh, come on, somebody. I feel the strength of the Lord here on Easter morning. Praise God. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. Satan continues to tell the lie to sinners that they are too far gone for salvation. The truth is we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But there is repentance. There is coming back from that death. There is coming back from that grave. There is a fact that you can be revived and rejuvenated by the Holy Ghost. In closing, the disciples were all completely discouraged after the crucifixion. They quarantined themselves away from the public view. But when they heard that Christ had risen from the grave, they were revived and rejuvenated. I want to ask you today, my friend, have you met the resurrected Christ? Have you had an experience of Him coming into your life and changing you forever? The one that promised to fill us with His Spirit 
and that He would never leave us or forsake us. The one that promised to stick with us even closer than our own brother. The one who has prepared a home in heaven for all of His people. Have you met Him? Because if you haven't, today you can meet Him. You can meet Him today. You can come to know Him today in a powerful way. Satan wants us to forget about Easter and the resurrection. But if we do, he can convince us that we too are doomed with no hope. But because of the resurrection of Christ, we have hope beyond our current situations in life. Easter screams loudly to us, as Paul said, No, but in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Come on, somebody. We are more than conquerors through Christ that loved us. Hallelujah. The Easter message is very simple. It's that our lives don't have to remain like they are. They can be better. We can be resurrected from our troubles. We can see a resurrection of love in our marriages and in our homes. We can rise from the ashes of sin that hold us down. This, my friend, is the power of the Easter story. And because He overcame, you and I can overcome too. Aren't you glad that you came out on Easter morning? Aren't you glad that you know Him and the power of His resurrection? Somebody praise the Lord today and give Him glory. Yes, Lord. To my people I say, trust in me. Continue to believe in me. Understand that I am the way. I am the life. I am the truth. If the report of any other conflicts with my report, whose report are you going to believe? I encourage you in this day and hour to believe the report that came from my word. The report that is still valid today for you. The report that will lead you and guide you and will keep you until the day of your resurrection. Whose report shall we believe? I know you shall believe the report of your master you shall believe the report that I have given you thus saith the Lord somebody praise the Lord today hallelujah hallelujah glory glory hallelujah praise God amen what a powerful day this has turned out to be. What an incredible spirit of the Lord I feel today. Amen. I'm so thankful for what God's done for us. One of the things that we often do at Easter time and this day is that we observe the Lord's Supper. We partake of what we call communion. I'm not going to take a long time here to explain it. Uh, for those of you that are watching on the live stream, uh, I often will do that and I will explain all the implications. But today we have a great group of people here in the parking lot and we are going to partake of the Lord's Supper or communion. And I want to read to you what Paul gave to us as we celebrate on this Easter morning the communion ceremony. You know, this past week has been a week where we remembered the sacrifice of Christ that He made for all of our sins. He submitted Himself to the cruelty of the cross so that we could be saved from all of our sins. 
And now today we have come together as Christians rejoicing in the fact that Christ overcame that dreaded enemy we call death and He rose from the grave. No day should cause us to be any more thankful than this very day. For on this day, we are fully focused on the fact that we enjoy salvation's benefits because of His death and resurrection. And so the Apostle Paul writes this in his word. He says, For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which He was betrayed, took bread. And when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also He took the cup when He had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till He come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. <clears throat> For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. My friend, preparation is an important part of this Christian communion. We must ask ourselves, are we prepared to receive communion with Christ in our life? How is my standing with God at this very moment? That is why we must first purify ourselves through, through repentant prayer. By doing this, we not only partake with Christ in a worthy manner, but we will also share in the joy and the beauty of this great sacrament. So I ask you wherever you are, whether it be in this parking lot or whether it be in your home, that we would now bow our heads and we would pray a prayer of repentance to the Lord to search our hearts and to make ourselves ready to have communion with Christ. Will you pray with me? Father, right now, Lord, we ask You for everyone that is present and everyone that is listening, everyone that is viewing, Lord, and myself included, Lord, that You would forgive us, dear Lord, of any and all sins that we've committed. Anything that's in our heart, in our life, in our spirits, that is not pleasing to You, God. We ask You, Lord, to take it away, to cleanse us from it, to purify our minds, to purify our words, to purify our actions. God, we ask You, Lord, to just let the blood of Calvary wash us clean, Lord, and keep us protected, dear Lord, from the evil of this world. Protect our minds and protect our lives, God, that we would serve You. God, we are so sorry for any sins that we have committed. We know that they are against You, Lord, and they bring dishonor to You, Lord Jesus. And so we ask You and we believe You today, God, that as we ask in faith believing You will, You shall forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, Lord, we thank You and we praise You and let everybody praise the Lord. We thank You, Lord. We give You glory. Come on, somebody. Give them a loud praise. Give them a praise today. I thank You, Lord, for it. I thank You for forgiveness. I thank You for salvation. I thank You for cleansing. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And now I'd like to bring Pastor Mark Jones up here. And he is going to lead you today in the first part of this. Praise the Lord. It is, it is good to be here with everyone today. It's good to be back amongst the brothers and Hallelujah. sisters of the, of the Lord. And you know, as, as I begin to think about communion, it's so often we, we, we look at the Word of God and, and what it says, but we uh, sometimes we overlook uh, uh, some of the portions of the meaning that are there. And as I begin to examine the words of the Lord, He said, take eat. Sometimes we think about that and, and we just kind of gloss over that. We, Alright, we're going to eat this. But in the, in the saying that He used there, the words that He used to take and to eat, Jesus had blessed that bread and He had given it to them. And, and 
What he was telling them is, listen, I don't want you to just take this and go put it on your nightstand. I don't want you to take this and, and go put it up in your home and just have it there as something to look at, something that you can remember. But I want you to take this and I want you to eat it. I want it to become personal to you. I want it to become active within you. Oh, hallelujah. The, the Word of God says that He was wounded for our transgression. The body, that bread that, 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 that represents yeah. Is his his body that was wounded for our transgression. Hallelujah. It was bruised for our iniquity. Yeah. The, 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 the stripes that he took upon that body, Hallelujah. that was for our healing. Yeah. The, the chastisement that he took was for our peace. Jesus. Jesus wants us to take today of this and, and, and to remember what he's done, Hallelujah. but not just a remembrance, Thank but Jesus. let it be an active part in our life. If you're here today and you've got fear in your life, Jesus says, I am the peace that you're looking for. If, if you have a sickness in your body today, Jesus said, I took those stripes so that you can be healed. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord for what He has done for us and all that His body represents not the least of which is the salvation that that brought to us. Oh, I thank God that He offered Himself as that perfect sacrifice. And we can partake of that today and bring that in and it can be personal to you and I. Hallelujah. Why don't you join with me today? Let's bow our head and, and let's bless this as we uh, participate. And, and we allow this to become alive within us today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we do thank You so much, God. Lord, for Your Word. We thank You, God, for Your body that You offered as that perfect sacrifice for us, God. Lord, for all that it represents, God. Lord, we give You thanks. We give You praise. And we, we pray right now, God, that as we participate in this, God, that it not just be a remembrance, God, but it be active and, and alive and at work within us today, God. Lord, let Your Spirit, God, Lord, let it move within us, God, and accomplish what Your Word has established, God. Oh, we thank You for it. And we pray this right now in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Join with me today. Take and eat of the bread. And after he ate of the bread, he passed the cup and he said, Now, this is the blood of my New Testament. There's so much that has been said about the blood of Jesus Christ. So many songs that have been written about the blood of Jesus Christ. It was not just blood, but it was precious blood. It was blood that could do more than any blood ever spilled. One drop of His blood can cleanse you from the deepest, darkest sins that you ever committed. One drop of His blood will change you from lost to saved, from hopeless to one with great hope, from a victim to a victor, from a loser to a winner. That's what the blood of Jesus Christ does. Amen. So I invite you to join with me today and let's drink of the fruit of the cup as the Lord instructed in remembrance of the blood that was shed on Calvary. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody praise the Lord. As our musicians come, amen, they come and lead us in worship as we close out this service. Come on, let's praise the Lord today and give Him glory. Because He
was out in the service today, I just, uh, I asked the bishop if it was all right if I just kind of shared something and, and gave the church a challenge today. Come on. Uh, the Lord has been, the Lord's been dealing with me for the past couple months, talking to me about how, uh, how, how the, there, there's a, there, there's a change that is taking place. Yes. You know, we, we've seen that with this virus that we've had, that, that's going around, we see the changes. We see how we've had to rethink our methods of worship. We've had to rethink how we assemble, re rethink some things. Right. Yeah. And I believe that God is, is at work in that, working in the church. Right. Come on. Today we've been talking about the resurrection. Hallelujah. And one of the definitions of the resurrection is awakening from a sleep yeah. or from a slumber. Right. And as I begin to, to look at that and to read about that and, and just think on those things and let the Lord begin to talk to me, my mind turned to the, to the passage in the Gospels where it talks about the parable of the ten virgins. Right. That's right. And how that right. they were all asleep. Right. All ten of them That's were right. asleep. That's right. But the cry came. That the bridegroom cometh. Right. Woo, hallelujah. And I feel in the Holy Ghost today a cry from the Lord that my coming is soon. My return is now. And I believe that the Lord is calling unto His church. And, and there is a, an awakening that God is giving to the church. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, now, listen, I, I'm not here condemning anyone. I don't think that anyone has his backslid and you're not you're not serving God. But my my challenge to the church today him, is that we would awaken. Yes. That we would awaken yes. into, into more than what we have been doing. Amen. That's right. good. Amen. Right. Oh, hallelujah. Churches Amen. across this world have 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 relegated their service to God into a, 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 a one time a week assembly. That's right. Making sure that I, I, I pay my tithes and I give my offering. And I, I thank God for those things. Right. I believe in those things. Right. I, I, I believe that that's a part yeah, of but it. There's more. But I believe it's Amen. just that. It's just a Amen. part. Amen. There's more. Amen. God has given us that Holy Ghost yes. within us. He has given yes. us His Spirit. It's not only a work, a work inside of us, but it's to work through us. Yes. We are all called to be a light unto this world. Yes. We are a light into a dark Amen. world. Amen. Church, I put a challenge before on, you this Amen. week. I, 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 oh, I just wish that someone would get a hold of this Amen. and that you would focus on awakening into yes. the fullness of what God desires Amen. for His yes. church. Amen. Oh, that there would be an awakening within Amen. us. Oh, that there's not a moment of the day Amen. that we're not letting this light shine. Amen. The Bible says that we're to present our bodies a living sacrifice. Yes. Amen. That we should be holy and acceptable Amen. unto God. We're not necessarily presenting that body as a sacrifice to Him, but we're a sacrifice unto this world. Amen. Oh, we're, we're, we're living a holy life, not, not because God needs for us right. to be Amen. holy, but because the, the world Amen. needs the example of yes. what a holy Amen. life is. Amen. Woo. Amen. The world needs an example of what it means yes. to be a part Amen. of the church. Yes. Right. Amen. Right. 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 Woo. Amen. Amen. And I, I put a challenge Amen. out to the church yes. this week. Amen. Spend time in prayer. Yes. Spend time yes. in the Word. Take time to, to get on the phone and call Amen. someone about being encouragement. Yes. Let your light shine. Amen. Look at the ways. Amen. Look and search yes. the ways to Amen. be a light into this world. Amen. People are are, are 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 confused right now. They they don't know what the future holds. 
They, they don't know what's going to take place in the next right. few weeks or few months. But we know yes. what the future holds yes, from amen. the Word of God. Amen. We know that yes. God wins. Yes, amen. We know where, where the end is. Amen. We know that if we trust in the truth of God's Word, that it's going to come to pass in us. If, if I live a life that's pleasing to Him, guess what? I'm going to be, I'm going to be all right. Yes. Whatever comes my way, Amen. I'm going to be all right. Amen. You're going to yes. be all right. Amen. That's why we don't have to have yes. fear because we have faith. Amen. We have trust. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. On this Resurrection Sunday, I, my prayer would be that we are all resurrected. We are all with me right now. Yes. I, I want us just to bow our heads. Maybe yes. you just want to raise your hands right where you are. Let's just begin to worship God. Hallelujah. Let's begin to, to ask God, say, Lord, open my eyes, God. Lord, awake within me. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, awake within your church, God. Lord, that that you desire, God. Lord, we know that you are coming for us, God. Lord, you are coming soon. God, and I want to be like those five, Lord. God, that are wise, Lord. God, that had oil stored so that when the dark times were there, that they could be alive. That they could see. That they could lead others. They could shine and show forth your glory. Oh, God, let your church go. Lord, let us ignite, God, God, that oil of the Holy Ghost that is within us, God. Lord, let us ignite the glory, God. Lord, Lord, let it shine, God. Speak unto your people, God. Lead us and direct us and guide us this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus. Church, we want to thank you so much for joining with us today. We want to thank you for being here. May the Lord richly bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name and happy Easter.